Okay, good evening everyone and hope you're all having a great day and um, there's usually a few seconds of a delay between uh, myself and you guys as you are listening at home. So I'll give it a few seconds till I see people coming in here and then we'll start having a wee chat. I'm just going to share this on my personal page and uh, let's have a wee conversation for a few minutes as people are tuning in. If you want to drop us a wee comment uh, to let us know that you're in, that would be great just so we can have a wee bit of chat and a bit of connection with each of you. So see there, very good. See people coming in. Great to have you tonight and thanks and a lovely evening. I know maybe you could be doing other things, but thank you for for tuning in here tonight and we're, we're we're in for a great night i'm i'm really uh believing that we're going to have a great night tonight and uh thank you for for joining us so leave us a comment if you want let's see who we have here alison galt um julie cutler good to see you mary mcclatchy hello mary and good evening to you too Hi, Carl. There's my grandparents. Good to see you. And uh, hope you are keeping well today and enjoying the sunshine. Bert McMaster. Bert, you're always one of the first in. Good evening to you, Bert. What a lovely day it was, wasn't it? It was so nice today. And I uh, hope you all had a had a good day. Um, Aaron McCain over in Castle Dare. Good to see you, Aaron. And uh, Gemma McDermott from Brookbra. And uh, there's Betty and Leslie. Good to see you. And hope you've had a nice time with your family over the last few days there. Um, thanks for tuning in tonight. Alan Knox, good evening, Alan. And no doubt you'll be glad to see your your good pal Gareth tonight, Alex. Or Alex, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Sandra Adams, good evening to you. So tonight, guys, we're going to be having a conversation on the Holy Spirit. Um, we are delighted tonight to have um, Assistant Pastor of, of Enniskill and Elam, Garth Carruthers, with us tonight. And we're going to be bringing Garth in in a few minutes' time. We just want to let people get in so that they get to hear the whole conversation, as I believe that it will it will be um, very worthwhile tonight as we um, engage in this conversation together on the Holy Spirit spirit so get your tea ready and um, if you haven't already and uh, open up your heart for god to move tonight if you do have any prayer requests please um comment them below if it's something that's private private message our facebook page um at brookbury elam and we'll pray for you after tonight we might not pick it up right now um but we will pick it up later so if uh, but if it's something that um you can put out to everybody please comment any prayer requests below my wife is somewhere in the house and she's writing them down and at the end of the night myself and garth will be praying um for your situation so let's see who else do we have here and um, tonight nigel robinson and jacqueline thanks for connecting in again tonight noel kearney looking forward to this tonight good man noel and Noel, thanks for the input you've had in myself and Gareth down the years. And uh, Gareth sent me a picture yesterday of us enjoying a good Ulster fry in your house. But um, it was more than an Ulster fry because it had extra trimmings. And uh, so thanks, Noel, for all you've done in our lives. Anne Subtle, good evening, Anne, from Lisbelaw. Good to have you, Anne. And hope you got those curtains sold, the scene you were selling on, on uh, Facebook. Robbie Mullen, good to see you. Robbie, I hope you're keeping well. I heard there's big news uh, soon. I think I have that right, uh, coming to your home. So hope all's doing well. Derek and Pearl, good evening to you and Davy Wheeler. Folks, in about two minutes, I'm going to bring Garth in here. Can I ask you to share this on your page? We want to get this message out there tonight about the Holy Spirit. We're going to be discussing things that many churches maybe have not taught their people we're going to try and make it as easy easily understood tonight as well if maybe you have never um thought about the holy spirit maybe you have never uh, talked much about the holy spirit before we're going to try and make it relatable and um, to everybody tonight so 
if you could click the share button, we would really appreciate that to get as many in to hear um, this vital conversation tonight. So, Davey, good to see you. Davey, good evening, Nathan. A wee bit of football chat. Well, Davey, I think there was a big match tonight, actually. Uh, Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. So, I don't know what the score is, but um, I'd prefer Borussia to win that. Irish Robinson, good to see you from Oma. Elaine Vaughan, Glenda Ginn, how are you? And I hope you're enjoying uh, the nice weather, folks. Good to see your comments there, Charlotte Crothers. Good to see you, Charlotte. And uh, sorry for keeping Garth last night from his kebab, but uh, <laughs> very good. So, yes, good to have you, Charlotte. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Good to see your comments coming in, folks. Keep your comments coming. If you have any prayer requests, please uh, write them um, in the comments. And at the end of the night, we're going to we're going to uh, engage in a in a time of prayer, praying for um, the needs. So let's let's uh, see if we can get Garth Garth Crothers in here. There we go. Can you hear Hello, me, Garth? Everyone. I can hear you, Nathan. Good man, Garth. I was just thinking uh, before we started tonight that um, probably one of the last times I was leading a prayer gathering with you was actually quite a number of years ago. I don't know if you remember it, do you? I have no idea what you're going to say. <laughs> do you remember um, you came to a, you came to do a placement um, for a month? Um, in Brook Braylon, and we said we were going to run a prayer event for young people, and we called it What If My People Prayed. Wow. Do you yeah, remember that? That's a long time ago. And we had over over 120 young people, I think, wow. that night praying. It was, a, it was a great night. I remember, where did I go? I think I went to Astros and Glovers for a pile of sand. You know, <laughs> I got a wee sand pit, and people could write their prayers in the sand. I remember going about the whole day looking for sand, on a big pile of extra money. I remember that well. So trusting that we're going to have a good night tonight. Thanks, Gar, for mm -hmm. tuning in. Um, many of the people here tonight will will probably know who you are. But uh, just just quickly, if there's anybody listening doesn't know who you are, and um, by now, just introduce yourself, your current uh, situation, and just tell us how you and your wonderful wife are getting on in lockdown. Yeah. So I'm Gareth Brothers. Um, I'm married to Charlotte. And I'm currently um, the assistant pastor over in Enniskill, Neelam, doing my minister and training there. So really enjoying it. Lockdown's been going well. It's bittersweet. Um, I know just with all the craziness going on for everyone, but we've really enjoyed the slower pace of life, especially when you're in ministry. It, it, it's been nice to, to slow down a wee bit and to, to do something different, to learn how to serve in, in this season. So, yes, it's been going, been going as good as it can be for us. Yeah. Picking up any cooking skills, Gareth? Yeah, uh, but in saying that, I did have beans and toast for dinner the night. But um, apart from that, we have. We've been doing a wee bit. We've been baking banana bread. I think we've had one loaf a week. So it, that's really the only thing I've picked up so far. And to be honest, that's mostly Charlotte as well. So not, not entirely. <laughs> well, um, I see there uh, Finton Masterson has asked me, um, is the red face the sun or the fitness? Um Pardon me for one second, Garth. I'm going to give uh, Finton a plug here. I'm just after completing Finton's uh, hit and core class, which literally hit me to the core. Um, so if anybody wants to do any fitness during this uh, period of uh, isolation and all of that, uh, Finton is starting a new class again next week. It's a four-part class, Tuesday and Thursday for two weeks. So if you want any more details on that, click Fenton in the comments and he will get you there. And Fenton, I hope you will give me a free pass now for next week for saying that. So Garth, um, we're going to be discussing tonight um, the Holy Spirit, just having an open, honest conversation. We're not here to, to give any new slant probably um, or to bore people with the details. We just want to have a conversation about it. Yeah. So Garth... Um, look, let's just open in prayer and let's just actually yeah. ask the Spirit to come. And yeah. then I'm going to hand over to you for a few minutes just to um, introduce the topic and share a few things. Garf, I know you're a free-spirited man. I'm just going to let you loose. Yeah, good. But, 
Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the many people that are tuned in right now. And whether the people tuning in are used to talking to the, uh, about the Holy Spirit or not, we ask that this wouldn't be a weird time or an awkward time, but we ask this would be a wonderful time, an enlightened time, an empowering time. Yeah. God, we just invite you to come. Oh. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have left your spirit here till the work on earth is done. And yeah. we just want to connect with you afresh tonight, God. So we just pray wherever anybody's at, even people that might be tuned in right now and wouldn't even call themselves a Christian. Maybe they don't even know who, who they are or what they believe. We just pray, God, would you just open up people's uh, hearts towards you tonight and just, just do something in each of our lives. Thank you for Garth. Thank you for the wisdom and uh, the things that you have done in his life and what you're yet to do. And we just pray as we discuss this tonight that you would lead us. So Holy Spirit, come, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Right, Garth, over to you. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, just, just by way of introduction to what we're going to speak about tonight, it's really building up to this Sunday. For those who, who don't know, this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And this may give you a chance to go and buy your Pentecost cards and Pentecost presents and get ready for Pentecost dinner. Or maybe not, because Pentecost Sunday doesn't seem to be as famous or as big a deal in, in the Christian calendar as dates such as Easter or, or Christmas. Uh, and I and me and Nathan just sort of don't really know why that is, because it's a pretty big deal. It's all about the Holy Spirit coming and equipping the church to continue the mission of Jesus. And I, I think I have an inkling why that is, I think there's a mindset in, in evangelical Christians here in the West that once we become a Christian, once we get saved, we wait till we get to heaven, while the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost is all about bringing heaven on earth. And it's far from the mission being over. And I can understand, especially with Christmas, it talks about the, the beginning of Jesus's ministry as he comes the child and Easter looks at the completion, so to speak, as he dies on the cross and rises from the grave and ascends into heaven. But the Bible is crystal clear that the mission is not finished. In fact, in, in the book of Acts, Dr. Luke writing it, looking back on his gospel, he says, I reported everything Jesus began to do and teach. And the Gospels and the life of Jesus is only the beginning of God's work here on earth. And that's what Pentecost is all about. It's all about the Holy Spirit coming to the church so that we would be his body and continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth, continuing the mission. And I suppose there's maybe this mindset is that we, we all know and we'd acknowledge that Jesus and, and the Father and the Holy Spirit of the Trinity and Jesus uh, is is lord and savior but the holy spirit we would maybe see him as a third member of the trinity which is true but i wonder do we as christians see it nearly like a third position on a podium rather than equal with the father and the son and this mindset isn't anything new i suppose it goes back all the way to scripture when jesus was speaking in john chapter 16 verse 7 he's speaking to the disciples he knows his time on earth is coming to an end and he says to them look i am going away but it's for your benefit because then my father can send the Holy Spirit. And the disciples are like, what? Really? It's for our benefit that you're leaving us? What could be better than having God on earth beside you? Like, think about that. As a Christian, or even if you're not a Christian, what could be more better than having Jesus by your side helping you go through life? Talk about knowing God's will when he's right beside you, speaking and talking and walking. Any times that you feel tempted to sin, he would step in and help you not to do that. Any times you feel a prompting, you would know for sure that he wants you to do something. But Jesus says the only thing that is better than having God by your side is having God inside you. And that's the day we live in. Because of the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming, we have God inside of us. Jesus says it's far better, but I wonder... If I was to do a survey of all the people on this live stream, 115 people, and I said, okay, you can, for the rest of your life, you can have Jesus in the flesh walking side by side with you, or you can have the Holy Spirit inside you. What would you pick? And to be honest, I think the majority of us would pick Jesus in the flesh beside us rather than the Holy Spirit in us. But Jesus said it's better for us that he would go and the Holy Spirit would come and this is what we want to tackle why is it better that the holy spirit 
has come on earth, why is it better that the Holy Spirit is in us? And if you're in that position where you're thinking, you know what, I think I'd rather Jesus walking up beside himself. I think we need to reassess where we are, our relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Realize that there's no hierarchy. No one's better than the other. In fact, we are living in blessed days. These are the days that the prophets longed for, to know the Spirit of God inside them. These are the days that the children of Israel longed for God working and moving in them and through them. And yet we can take that for granted. So by way of introduction, I wanted to just establish maybe the the difference in people's theology on the Holy Spirit and their practice. You ask any Christian, maybe in, in our churches and in the churches of Fermanagh and right across this country, and you say, what do you think of the Holy Spirit? And they'll say, he's God, and they'll list lots of attributes. But sometimes that's completely different to their practice. They don't hold him. They don't live out their lives that he is in such a place, that high esteem that he deserves. And I suppose as Pentecostals, we'll take any opportunity to talk about the Holy Spirit, and especially with Pentecostal Sunday, it's a reason to open up this conversation and dialogue, to look at the importance of the Holy Spirit, the implications in our life, and then inviting people to respond to that, Nathan. Fantastic. Garth, you're only getting started here, and I can see you. You get me excited, and and you know, I, I just want to from the start here uh, just say to everybody who's listening, we're not here to try and win a theological debate. We're not here even to try and prove a point. We're here to try and tell you what the Bible says: that God, in His grace, has not left us abandoned, but has gave us His Spirit to to continue. Yeah. what he begun. And that, isn't that the wonderful thing with this, Garth, is actually Jesus has invited us to continue the journey. And we've seen the generations come and go. And now yeah. we're alive and the baton is in our hand. That's right. And I think at times we we can get so far, but the reality is this, without the Spirit, we will not be able yeah. to complete the task. Um, so, Garth, um We've talked a wee bit about who is the Holy Spirit um, and this week being Pentecost um, Sunday. Garth, tell me, when were you first introduced to the Holy Spirit? Uh, I, I, this isn't actually scripted. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying question. to uh, pull out of you. When were you first introduced? I suppose there's, there's really two answers to that. The Holy Spirit's always been working and moving in my life, whether I've realised it or not. Um, growing up, in, in a church, an Anglican church, I suppose the, the Holy Spirit wasn't necessarily the forefront of conversation um, from the pulpit or in the pew. It just wasn't maybe in our vocabulary, the understanding um, of my experience there. And it wasn't really until I became a Christian and realised that these feelings and experiences I was having, um, especially I came to faith in Brookbrilla, I think it was about 15, 16, uh, and they actually started to... Um, I remember the pastor at the time started to explain uh, through scripture that the Holy Spirit had been prompting me. I felt all these emotions. I felt all these experiences, but I didn't have language. And the scripture gave me language that it was actually the Holy Spirit. And it was through, through really, um, I suppose the word on the Spirit, they, they intermingled. I, I wouldn't have known really the Holy Spirit without the word of God and how they work together so, so well. So it was probably at the age of 15, that I started to understand, um, not just know about the Holy Spirit, but understand who he is and get to know him myself. Mm. Um, I think that's wonderful, Garth. I think we can all see that that journey that you, you have been on. It's not something uh, that, you know, you're on a journey, we're all on a journey with the Holy Spirit and there's there's greater depths and, and things yet to, to experience and understand. And we can't really get to the, to the depths we, it's it's a very hard thing at times to put into words. It's something you have to experience, I guess. Yeah. But I, you I were heard talk- someone say one time, it's better felt than telt. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that's terrible English, but that's how they explained it. Well, I just want to I just want to um, tackle a misconception, Garth here, uh, which is we, the the variety uh, of backgrounds that is tuning in right now. 
Um, yeah. We just want to acknowledge that. And many of you are coming from different backgrounds. Maybe some of you are coming from no church backgrounds. So for some of you, you have maybe grew up on one side of the fence, which is um, really uh, scripture led. And uh, it is uh, it's sort of father, son and holy Bible. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't mean that um, in a condescending way. Um, and then on the other end of the fence, there are some of you maybe that have grew up and uh, you've seen some wacky things that have actually put you off. You grew up in a system where it was everything was a spirit. And But what we want to portray, and me and Garth have been talking about this over the last week, is that it's not either or. Yeah. It's both and. We need the spirit of God, the power of God, and we need the word of God. That's right. And it's hard, Gareth, at times to find a church that actually has that balance of both and. Yeah. Um, I just want to give two verses, Gareth, and then jump in and, and uh, comment a bit on that. And that's, you know, we need the word because God is the word. People yeah. say, what is God's plan for my life? And they're waiting for some prophecy from someone to come. But the the word of God, if we will get into the word of God, this will be a light. Yeah, and right. uh, God is the word. So to have more of the word means to have more of God coming, more of his spirit coming. And we need the spirit because in Luke eleven thirteen it says, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is. That's right. There is freedom. We love that verse in our Pentecostal yeah. services. But we need both. It's yeah. not, it's not a, they, they should never be a conflict. It should be right. a beautiful unity between the two flowing. How do you feel about that, Garth? Yeah, I suppose, Nathan, they can't contradict one another. You know, people mm -hmm. think there's a contradiction between worship and the word in one sense, but they go go together so well because the Holy Scriptures were, were authored by the Holy Spirit. That's right. The Bible tells us that in Second Timothy, that they're, they're, spirit, they're breathed out by God and never would you see anywhere in the holy or in the holy scriptures contradict the holy spirit because the holy spirit's the author uh, and they go together so well in fact I, I think a good image of it you can actually find in scripture is is in genesis at the very beginning where you see that the spirit of god is just brooding over the waters and uh, we're not told how long the spirit's brooding there for it could have been for 10 minutes could have been for 10 years. Like, we're, we're not told. There wouldn't have been a time frame then. It, it's just brooding. Uh, and it makes me ask the question, well, what is it waiting on? What is the spirit brooding and waiting on? Uh, and it comes clear in the next verse. God says, let there be light. And there was light. The spirit waits for the word. And mm -hmm. then it moves. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. remarkable that they go hand in hand. The spirit doesn't move without the word. And the word can't move without the spirit. They go mm -hmm. so well together. And they should never be separated. But I can understand that, I suppose, that mindset we were talking about earlier, the, uh, nearly undermining and overlooking the Holy Spirit because of the, the tradition that we grew up in. But our theology and our view and our perspective of the Holy Spirit should never be based on our experience, but always on the Word of God. Because he wrote it, it's what he says about himself. It's nearly his autobiography in places. Uh, and we can learn so much about the Holy Spirit from that. We would never seek to, to separate that from our own experiences. We've experienced this and then we try and shape scripture around us. But rather, we see scripture and shape our experience around that instead. Yeah. Brilliant. And so, and, and as a preacher, Garth, uh, you'll be fit to understand that you know the difference when you're just preaching words. But yeah. you know the difference whenever the spirit and the word are working together. Yeah. And uh, and especially then when it leads into the the application and the ministry after. If you can Completely. get the both going together, I'll tell you it's an unstoppable it's Completely. an unstoppable force. That's right. And it reminds me even of the church in Acts, Nathan, where mm -hmm. um they're they're praying in Acts chapter four, they're praying for Peter, uh, or they're praying for John and for, for Peter, who've been taken by the council and threatened not to preach and they're gathering and instead of praying that the persecution would stop they pray for boldness they mm. want to preach the word more boldly and the bible says yeah. and i think it's acts 4 31 that as they were praying the room shakes and they're filled with the holy spirit and the next verse after it says then they went out and preached bolder than ever before mm. like a, the word and the spirit the spirit comes to ignite yeah. the word and mm. it goes so well together yeah 
it reminds me, Garp, there's a there's a guy in our church, um, one of the the great don't, examples. Don't name him, don't name him. Uh, no, don't you worry. <laughs> He'll not be on this tonight anyway. He doesn't have Facebook, so um but he he believes that God is gonna shake a prayer meeting physically. He's gonna shake the room before he dies. So I'm I'm clinging like a, a leech to him wherever he goes praying. You know, it would just be wonderful, wouldn't it, to, to have something um like that. But I, I just want to encourage somebody who's listening to this right now. And I, I just feel to just drop this in at the moment, Garth, is that anybody who's listening and maybe you've prayed for God to fill you with the Spirit, and maybe nothing's happened and you've got discouraged and disillusioned and you've just gave up. I want to let you know, this isn't a wild goose chase God sent you on. Yeah. It's actually his heart. He says that if we who are evil know how to give good things to our children, he says, how much more will the Father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? It's his heart. God wants it's not like God's tight-fistedly right. saying, no, I don't want to give him a spirit. He's saying, it's, it's, like, it's like Luke says, it's a gift. Yeah. How much more will I not give you the gift of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And so just open up your heart as we're talking and just, just even figuratively speaking, open up your hand, say, God, I, w- I want the gift. I want whatever you have. Um, for me so garth we that's a wee bit of information we're not going to go into all of the depths tonight we couldn't possibly do that um we're not really going to touch on on so much the gifts and all that we're we're just uh talking broadly about the spirit but let's go into a wee bit of implication here garth the implications uh for us today so jonna jonna lead a wee bit into that there garth yeah, I suppose once we understand um, who the Holy Spirit is, you know, that he is God, what a, a person of the Trinity, um, and that he is available to each and every believer. In fact, the Bible says in, in Corinthians that we can't cry out that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit in us. So anyone who is a believer has the Holy Spirit. But but the implications, I suppose, as we look at Pentecost Sunday, is this, this filling of the Holy Spirit, that he comes fresh um and that has massive implications in the believer's life it's, it's nearly like the prayer of john the baptist where he goes let me decrease and you increase i want more of you and less of me and we see this at the time that the disciples were waiting in the upper room but what were they waiting on they were waiting on the promise from jesus if you look at the gospels all four gospels will show you that jesus promised to baptize them with the holy spirit we see it in in, in Luke chapter 3 verse 16 we see it in John 1 33 Mark 1 verse 8 Matthew 3 11 I think and again it's reiterated in Acts chapter 1 verse 5 and that imagery of baptism is like water baptism he says John baptized with water uh, and just the same way as you get baptized with water you're completely soaked and drenched and immersed in water when Jesus comes as he would in the day of Pentecost, he was going to baptize them with the Holy Spirit. They would be completely soaked, dripping, immersed in the presence of God. And that has dramatic, like, dramatic implications on our life. Like, can you imagine, Nathan, if I was to say to you, I am, I just watched, I don't know if anyone was watching a lot of Netflix over, um, over this lockdown period, but I watched uh, a thing that was recommended by my neighbour called The Last Dance, looking at Michael Jordan and such a great basketball player he was. If I was to tell you that God had given me the gift, but it wasn't the gift of tongues, it wasn't the gift of hospitality, it was the gift of basketball. I mean, wow, okay, interesting. I think you should prove it. And we said, right, we'll go to the lake down four, we'll, we'll do a bit of social distance in basketball, and I'll show you. And I was to, to turn up and, and do a few dribbles, uh, and nothing special you would really question going really have you been given this gift by god because you haven't changed i remember one time i was in a meeting where the preacher came in and he said sorry i'm late i got hit by a bus i remember thinking you don't look like you got hit by a bus <laughs> he only got a wee tap on the side of his on his back but you know i was expecting something massive and i suppose when it comes to the holy spirit when we're filled with god in us it dramatically changes our lives completely changes our life and there's a purpose for it in fact when jesus was baptized himself the holy spirit came down on him like a dove it says that he actually went into the wilderness he was led by the spirit he was tested during those days and he came out full of the holy spirit but he went 
back to his hometown, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he picked up a scripture, I think it's in Luke chapter 4, and it was a prophecy from Isaiah. And as he picked it up, he said the words on it, that um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he went on to say, he's upon me to give me good feelings. He's upon me to give me goosebumps in the back of my arm. He's on me to, to make me feel a better person. Of course he didn't say that. He said, the spirit of, of the Lord is upon me and he's anointed me to share the good news, to set the captives free, to see blind eyes open and to proclaim the, the year of the Lord's favour. There's a purpose to the spirit coming and being in the life of the believer. And we see that actually in the, in the story um, in Luke chapter 2 or in Acts chapter 2 of the story of Pentecost. Nathan, maybe you want to pick it up there and, and discuss a wee bit about that. Yeah, well... I guess something really in my heart at the moment is uh, obviously we're in lockdown and how the disciples and um, the followers, they, they were in a lockdown, a, a, a self-created lockdown really um, in John chapter 20. They're, they've shut the door of the house because they're afraid, afraid to carry the mission on. Yes. What, what will happen to us? Our, our leader, our teacher, our commander, he's been murdered. Will they accuse us of stealing his body? But then all of a sudden we see not long after in Acts 2, these same people are on the streets proclaiming yeah. the message and continuing the, the, the story and the plan of God. So Completely. what has happened? What is the difference? The difference is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, That is the one difference. And, and this is something I want to say, and this is maybe an irritation of mine um, growing up, is that um, I heard so much emphasis on speaking in tongues, and uh, thank God for that for that gift, yeah. and thank God for that help uh, in our personal lives, corporately. It can really have such a great impact. But you know what? That early disciples weren't necessarily even asking for the Holy Spirit so that they may speak in tongues. Yeah. The main reason, uh, Jesus says, you will receive my Holy Spirit and be my witnesses. That is the purpose. It's yeah. for fuel-filled evangelism, really. It's for boldness. It's to be fit to continue the journey that God has put us on. Yeah, and completely. so maybe you are listening and you have been put off because of the gifts of the Spirit, or maybe people have abused the gifts, yeah. but... Just because someone has abused um, the gifts, it does not mean that the gifts are wrong. Completely. It's like everything in life. There are good things that have been abused, but it doesn't mean that it's non-void. Yeah. And so I, I just think as we look at Pentecost Sunday, I looked at these people, as you said, they weren't wanting the Holy Spirit to have a nice tingly or yeah. actually I just want to raise my hands and have a nice singing time and and yeah. as, as someone in, a, in, a, in our church says, say a few Scooby-Doo's, <laughs> mm -hmm. that wasn't it. It wasn't to sit in that same room and enjoy fellowship even. Yeah. It was actually to go out and to see the miraculous happen outside of the walls. And uh, I, think, I think if that is our heart and that's where we come from, that, God, I want to be bold and I want to have power, to, to be your witness, I believe God will come and he yeah. will empower that. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's just a few of the thoughts I've been having over this last week um, in the lead up. And, and we see that in our context, don't we? That there's so much fear in our lockdown yeah. and even upon the Christians. But wouldn't it be wonderful that we would come out of the lockdown like the disciples with a fresh um, touch of God that catapults us into the mission yeah. in a way we've never experienced. Yeah, completely. And I suppose too, Nathan, just, just on that, that that mission and, and that desire is birthed out of personal holiness as well. Like mm -hmm. when when the Holy Spirit came and the promise of Jesus is that he would baptise us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm -hmm. And the, the Pentecost, we, we see that the tongues of fire were there and that, were fire, that is like a refiner's fire, the way that the Holy Spirit comes to burn off all sin in our life, just to, to make this shiny gold come out, this bright gold, and so it can shine for Jesus with our lives. Uh, and this desire of, of fire, we see it throughout Scripture as, as a, a, a symbol and a representation of God's presence, that God's presence in us uh, helps us to be holy, obedient people, 
and that leads us to to evangelism that leads us to live this good news out and to share it with all those around us yeah fantastic and that's that's what what ireland needs right now i guess garth isn't isn't more meetings or more yeah. services uh, what ireland needs is is a is an is an army to rise yeah. up and to take the message uh, with the power of the spirit right. to to all corners. I know that you yeah. have a big heart for Ireland, Garth. Yeah. Um, and to see God move, um, not just in the north, but across the whole land. Just as we're sort of uh, moving in, just to sort of the the final section before we begin to pray, I'd love to ask you, Garth, just your heart um, for Ireland. And what what do you think? Uh, the church really needs at this time. I know I haven't put that down. That's just my heart yeah. to ask you that at the moment. Yeah, I'm. Re- I've been really encouraged to just to see, um, even within our own denomination, within the Elam Church, Nathan, just the passion for Ireland. Um, just to see the hunger to see God work and move. Some amazing work going on. Um, not only in in our church and in the churches right across um, the island, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I have a heart. I, I can see. Myself and Charlotte, um, long term, helping playing our part in, in reaching the island. I suppose some of the statistics out there is really mind boggling that mm-hmm. we live in Northern Ireland, and Northern Ireland is the highest uh, percentage uh, per population of evangelical Christians in an English speaking country in the whole world. Like that, that's ridiculous. We have the highest uh, population of English being the first language, mm-hmm. and we border the Republic of Ireland which is the other end of the spectrum. It's the least um, percentage of evangelical Christians per population of any English-speaking first language country in the whole world. Like these two countries border, and it shouldn't be like that. I think we have a tendency to to give into nationalistic pride in our country. Are we nor armed? Uh, and that's, that's good that we have a passion, but we need to really look across and see the, the need in Ireland and see a mission field on our doorstep. There's not many other countries around the world that we can go to, especially us, in 20 minutes um, mm-hmm. that is unreached. Uh, and that's really what the, the, the island of Ireland is. It's unreached for the gospel. And I think there's phenomenal opportunities, not only for people to go and plant and give their life for this on the island and yet be so close to home. Like mm-hmm. 100 years ago, you went to China you went, got a one-way ticket and you went there or to India. But now we have the opportunity to take a day trip and to, to reach out and to share. So, yeah, I really have a heart of equipping even the churches in Northern Ireland right across the border because we have the potential to, to to resource a move of God, a revival right on our doorstep. And I think that's really exciting. Mm. Yeah. And I know, Garth, you are someone you, uh, you, you are up for it. And... Uh, you will you you will do what it'll take, and I know that about you. You won't say it yourself, but and I hope you've told Charlotte by the way that you're prepared to go because you just said it live on this, and she's listening. So Charlotte, <laughs> um, hope you're ready for for the journey. But you know, Garth, you know, I think as well the enemy tries to put lies in this and get us afraid. I remember, and and you were part of the original team going down into Rossley when we yeah. when we kick started a kids ministry. And I had people, Christians, coming to me saying, I wouldn't really be doing that now. You know, that's a hard area and they'll not accept you and, and all that. And Garth, I think you'll admit, it was one of the most open times I've ever it's seen. Yeah. Like, and like, there wasn't a Protestant in sight. The Protestants wouldn't come. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was an amazing time and opportunity and uh, some incredible stories coming out of that. And I, I honestly think, you know, God will do a new thing in Ireland, yeah. but it might surprise us where it will come from. Completely. I, th- I think there's an opportunity um, that is on the horizon for people to put their labels to one side, to say that first and foremost, we are followers of Jesus, no matter what your background, your tradition is. Uh, and that's, as we step forward, we just want to reach people with the gospel. And if that offends you, God bless you. Um, mm-hmm. But we need to keep moving on. And it's, it's amazing just to meet and to fellowship and to serve with like-minded people who want to see the gospel go to all the corners um, of the earth and including our back door. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Well, Garth, uh, just something uh, I'm going to just uh, 
say before, um, if you have anything else you want to add about it, and then we'll move into praying for people and just uh, asking God to just come. But it's yeah. actually just that, um, you know, the importance of uh, everything the Spirit offers. So obviously we have the we have the gifts of Spirit, which we're here to say we yeah. believe are for today. Not just because we yeah. believe it in our heads, but we have seen it and we know it in a personal level. Um, yeah. And maybe sometime we'll talk a bit more about this. But as well, there's the fruit of the Spirit. And yeah. I love uh, how, the, how the Scriptures tell us you can speak with the tongues of angels. You can, you can do all of these great, mighty gifts. But if you don't have love, you're, you're like a clanging symbol. You're just a noise. Nobody yeah. wants to hear it. Yeah. And I think in these days, I think a challenge for the Pentecostal church is that we would, we would have the fruit and the gifts. Yeah. That people would actually listen to the gift because they've seen the fruit. That's right. Um, again, you're right. There, again, there's no separation there. There should yeah. be. I suppose I've seen people who've been operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but there hasn't been much fruit in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that shouldn't be the case. In fact, mm -hmm. Jesus said that on the last day, people will come up to him and say, Lord, Lord, did I not you know, prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? He goes, I never knew you. So we can't rate one above the other. And on the other hand, we can't do the same thing where we value fruit and not the gifts. I know some people have said to me, well, my church experience, I've never seen the gifts happen in our church, so they mustn't be real. And I can walk into their church and go like, well, I don't see the fruit of the Holy Spirit either, but yeah. the fruit of the Holy Spirit mustn't be real either. But, you know, yeah. it's that... They both go hand in hand. Um, mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit seeks to, to implant both in our life and both are a journey. No one becomes a prophet in the morning. Like no one mm -hmm. uh, becomes full of, of compassion and love and peace in the morning. They're all available. It's like fruit you grow. It takes time. God's always working in us. None of us have been mastered in it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a journey we're growing on and we would love to help people with this. I suppose this would be a great conversation to have because the Holy Spirit comes to, to to work and move through us and that always happens through the fruit and the gifts and I suppose um, as, as we're talking about the, the Holy Spirit maybe the hierarchy some may place the Father or Jesus above Holy Spirit I think people do that with the gifts and fruit as well like I know as you said people can place tongues really high up that's the gift I want mm -hmm. and they forget about hospitality but if I'm being honest, Nathan, I've seen more people come to faith through the gift of hospitality than I have the gift of tongues. That's right. They're all great, but the Bible says that we are a body. We all play a role. Some are the ear, some are the eye, some are the nose. We don't look down on one another, but we work together. And that's the beauty. When the fruit of the Holy Spirit uh, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit is working mm -hmm. through the church, mm -hmm. it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Yeah. And... Garth, I'd love to talk. I'd love to talk about this. It's something I'm very interested in, um, and something I'm, I'm a, even on a journey myself. And we're all on a journey, and yeah. we want to get to the depths that God has. I know, for me in my life, I just always knew, and I still know, there's more in God. I never want to settle, or even nearly get bored of my journey, but want to just keep pursuing everything that God yeah. has. And the Bible talks about. Be continually filled. Keep on being That's filled right. with the Spirit. So if you're Season listening to us, yeah, if you're listening to us tonight, and maybe you're going on, oh, I was filled with the Spirit 20 years ago. Brilliant. What yeah. about today, May yeah. 2020? Have you been yeah. filled with the Spirit today? Yeah. Are you overflowing with the love and compassion and the power of God today? Yeah. Well, we're I, going to pray that God yeah. will just do yeah. something fresh. I suppose it's a wee bit like the image of a car, Nathan, that like, mm -hmm. yes, I, I filled my car up a month ago, you know, yeah. but if it's still full the day, like I haven't done many miles. And the truth mm -hmm. is when we, when we are serving Jesus, living for him, we're giving out what has been poured into us. Jesus mm -hmm. said better is to give than receive. We're, we're continually living this out. We need to be continually filled. It's not a one-off. It's a lifestyle with the Holy Spirit, a Holy Spirit that fills us continually uh, mm -hmm. and works and moves in our life. Yeah, fantastic. And Gareth, uh, we have seen it. We've seen it amongst the youth. I don't know why, but it seems like young people are more at times open or, um, I don't know, but I've just seen in, in, in my time in the youth, young people are just up for God moving. And yeah. if that me meant that they actually looked silly in front of their peers, they were quite 
uh, up for that. And so I just want to encourage us, even as we are adults now, and the older yeah. we get, sometimes the more afraid of our appearance to people. Yeah. But to pursue God, you're going to have to let those things go. Yeah. You know? I fear man's a snare, you know? Yeah. And sometimes the older we get, the, and the more experience we have in church, the more baggage we carry. And yeah. I suppose this is an opportunity, especially coming up to Pentecost Sunday, just to leave that at the door, just mm-hmm. like the disciples. Like they, mm-hmm. the 120 of them gathered, I'm sure they weren't perfect, you know, and they had to leave it at the door, waiting on the promise, and everything yeah. changed. Yeah, brilliant. Well, look, Arf, let's, let's begin to, to just pray here for people, pray for needs. Um, yeah. Just let's invite the Holy Spirit um, yeah. to come. I just want to say anybody who feels lonely tonight, anybody who needs help tonight, that's why God sent his Spirit. Sure. In John 14, he says, I will send a helper. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't come to take life away from you. He comes to help you with life and to give yeah. you to give you life. So we're going to pray right now just into... Um, a number of things. This is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, yeah. says the Lord of hosts. So we, me and Garth have nothing to offer you in our might or our strength or our power, yeah. but we have something to offer you tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm telling Amen. you, everything's possible tonight, Garth. Yeah. Um, so Garth, just a, I'm not sure where to pray first. We'll, we'll maybe just actually move for a, to pray just for people to have a touch uh, or yeah. to, to even sense something happening right now, to even people that are hungry to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Um, that, that, that God would actually, why could not God not do it right now? Okay. So, Garth, would you would you like to pray or even just give a few um, yeah. things if we're praying about that? Yeah, let's pray. And, and just before I do, I, I want to give this challenge that I suppose it's this idea that the Bible tells us that Jesus would send the comforter to us and you can only receive the comforter when you're not comfortable. If you're already very comfortable in your Christian life and we all should be content with what God's doing in us, but discontent wanting more, that prayer of John the Baptist, more of you and less of us. If you're comfortable, if you're secure and you you feel as if there's nothing more you could learn, you know, I've reached the peak, then God can't send his comforter to you. And right now, I want to invite you just to posture yourself wherever you are, just like the disciples, posture yourself before God, just waiting to receive. Just uh, maybe this may seem silly to you too, but I want to invite you if you're by yourself or with people and you even want to hold out your hands. Um, when we communicate with God, that's all prayer is, communication with God. But you don't realize at times we actually communicate with people through our body language far more than our words. So right now, just if, if this helps you to, to focus your mind, just to, to posture yourself so you can communicate with your actions that, God, I want to receive you, then let this be so. And I'd love to just to pray for you right now in this moment, wherever you are. Mm-hmm. Father, I thank you so much that you are here with each and every one of us by the power of your Holy Spirit. I mm-hmm. thank you for the 100 people listening to this word. Um, may it not be my word or Nathan's word, but your word. And I pray right now, wherever they are, for those who are wanting to receive the Holy Spirit, wanting to be filled afresh, maybe for the first time, maybe for the 100th, that right now in this moment, they would know you coming. Mm. They would feel the weights off their shoulders, the peace that passes all understanding, filling their hearts and minds. I pray, Lord, there would be the, the wind of heaven Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind would come. We know that hearing comes, or faith comes by hearing, and you want to not only speak to them, but speak through them. Would you change their mouth, their lips Mm. in this moment, their words? I pray, Father, that you would put your word in their mouth. I pray, Father, that the fire of heaven would come, would burn up all sin. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would send them out to be witnesses for you, that you would bring them into a deeper walk of holiness with you, of obedience. I pray, Mm -hmm. Father, for those who are maybe struggling with different fruit of the Holy Spirit, I pray that Mm -hmm. you would start to develop love Mm -hmm. and peace and patience in this season of stress. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father, that you would start to to give gifts in this moment. I pray, Mm -hmm. Father, for gifts of healing, 
for those who are yes. sick in the community needed you bring gifts of healing right now we mm. pray father just for gifts of hospitality they would open their hearts mm. and their homes and their hands mm. to people around them even yes. in this time of social distancing we pray father in this moment mm. that you would breathe afresh on all yes, those Lord. who are hearing this word amen mm. yes yes lord and father I, I just pray for anybody who has a uh, had a bad experience yeah lord somebody who has been put off even speaking about the holy spirit because of yeah. something that they have seen or something they have done and they have put up barriers and maybe it has even caused brokenness lord in their life and they haven't actually been fit to walk in the fullness and maybe it has actually even caused as they look at others talking about the holy spirit nearly creates an anger or nearly like a a resentment yeah god i just pray that you will heal that a uh, heart i pray i pray that you will heal and uh, just wipe over that experience yeah. and i pray that people will not lord just throw it out lord because of something they have seen done in the past but i pray that even tonight people will begin to explore who you really are holy spirit yes yeah. you are not in it you are not a thing you are a person a person who has been sent by god you are god we thank you lord and i just pray that you will lead us into a more intimate relationship with you take us away from religion even lord take us away from our comfortable reality that yeah. lord we even come in the attitude of repentance and and just say we're sorry lord yeah for whenever we have been filled with so many other things but not filled mm. with your spirit God, how can it be that in the same landmass that we have the most evangelized country and the least, Lord, as the church, Lord, Father, we just say we're sorry that we haven't yeah. maybe completed the task you have gave to us. But we just ask you, Lord, we just ask you to, tonight, Lord, that you would just give us a fresh vision for the mission, we pray, God. God, help us not to get our eyes on ourselves and on on our, our houses and our cars and our jobs and our families. And those things are lovely, Lord, but may our focus, Lord, be to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Garth, would you pray for boldness? Anybody maybe who's, who's a, maybe their life yeah. is more the picture of the disciples in the room bound by fear. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And even even afraid to share things, maybe yeah. even people on social media who are afraid to share things. Just ask ask God to fill us yeah. with, with that. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this moment. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, and even just for the mm. just for the verse you've given me to share right now. Mm. I just pray I want to share Acts two fifteen, mm. and it's when. The Holy Spirit has fell on the disciples. They went out and they spoke in many tongues. Mm. And all the nations gather at their doorstep and they start to laugh and they start to mock and go, these fellas are drunk. Mm. And there's a fear that comes with it. I pray against the fear of man and the believers in this chat right now. I just pray, Father, that they may be afraid of the mocking voice. Well, what will they say? What, 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 will they think I'm drunk? Will they think I'm stupid? Will they think I'm mad? If I was a share of the goodness of God, but just I pray right now the words of Acts two fifteen over them, and uh, and Peter's response. He turns around and goes, guys, it's mm -hmm. completely normal. Sure, it's only nine o'clock. These mm -hmm. guys aren't drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning, and he sets this precedent that is completely normal to be filled with the Holy Spirit at nine o'clock in the morning. What, what what else could it be? Mm -hmm. And I just pray, Father, for those who are really struggling in the workplace. I pray for yes. the younger people who are maybe struggling in the school yes. to share their faith, that they would realize that this word is for them, that it's completely normal for them to yes. be filled with the Holy Spirit at nine o'clock in the morning. When they begin yeah. work, when they begin school, when they begin their day, it's completely normal to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray right now that fear would go in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Father, for a boldness that only comes from heaven. I thank you, Lord, that you ask us in your word to take courage. Mm. You don't give us the gift of courage, mm. but you ask us time and time again, you command us mm. to take courage. And I pray right now, Father, you would help each and every one person listening mm. to take courage, to mm. share the good news with all those around them, whether yeah. that's the person in the next room or next door, 
You pray, Holy Spirit, that you would give them the boldness to share. Amen. Yeah. That they would not worry about their own words. It would be like Paul. It says, like, I didn't come to you with eloquent words, but with the power of the resurrection. I pray, Father, they wouldn't worry about their eloquent words, knowing that the Holy Spirit, as you said in your word, will always give us the words in our time of need. So come right now, boldness in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Garth, when, whenever you were uh, praying there, um, uh, there was uh, someone, uh, Jane Gilbert, thank you for your comment about the importance of the Holy Spirit in, in revealing sin. And uh, in conviction, which is basically uh, the power that draws us um, to realize who we are without God, that we are sinful, we've fallen short. And really, I guess we, we need that in our land again, yeah. sort of a fear of the Lord, which is a work of the Spirit. Uh, John 6, no one can come unless the Father draws him, and he does that by his Spirit. So sure. should, should maybe we pray just for our families, maybe if you have family right now, and uh, who aren't Christians yet, who haven't given their lives to the Lord, we just want to join with you and pray for your families and that the Spirit would work and draw them. But yeah. at the same time, that's not an excuse for us to do nothing. God, very often, how many testimonies have you heard, Garth, where someone is saved because of the witness of a friend or family yeah, member? Completely. So it's So it's both and God's Spirit working as we witness so father right now we pray for every family listening yes lord lord a hundred a hundred devices on right now probably that's a hundred families represented and we we also add our every family of our churches as well god at times we get weak at times lord we feel like giving up lord for some people they have been praying for their children their grandchildren for their sibling for their parent for years maybe even for decades. God, instead of it looking better, it has actually got worse. But God, I thank you that you are a God of miracles. You are a God of breakthrough. You're a God who saves uh, who, the whosoever. It, there's no conditions on that. And so God, I just pray right now, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and to bring your, your conviction. Bring, Lord, your awareness of God to people's lives. May people, Lord, like just have that experience like, like Paul, Lord. It may not be a dramatic light, but where they will realize, who am I before this God? God, bring your revelation, we pray. Holy Spirit, we need you to come afresh. Thank you, you have promised yeah. in Joel 2. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God, we ask you, Lord, not by might, not by power but by your spirit will you draw ireland back to you god yeah. god will you draw our families back yeah for all of our families we pray for our children my own children tonight god we're praying lord that our generations even yet to come will serve the living god move in salvation we pray because salvation yes, is off you god it's your That's heart right. to save and to move thank you for saving garth that that night yeah. lord as a young boy lord where you stepped in god and Lord, you answered prayer, Lord, as a youth ministry, we prayed and we prayed, God, for, for you to save young people, God. And I just thank you for that night, God, where Garth surrendered his life Amen. to you. And, and Lord, he, he has, Lord, he's had a complete encounter with the Holy Spirit. And we're praying tonight, God, even tonight, that somebody who's listening or, yeah. or something will happen yeah. tonight, Lord, through prayer. Thank you for prayer. God, I thank you. God, he answers prayer. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Garth, would you would you pray for healing? Um, there's people, uh, I'll, I'll read some of these out, and apologies if I haven't picked them all up. Okay. Patsy with coronavirus, and don't worry, Garth, you don't need to mention name. We're, we're just verbalizing them now, but we're just going to pray yeah. healing. Um, a family situation needing prayer for their son. Um, Avery, a six month old baby in ICU Dublin um, after heart surgery um, Dorothy in hospital Anne and a family who lost a young boy I also want to add to that tonight Harvey who you know as well Gareth yeah. and his situation and as well Keith Woods thank the Lord has come through but uh, there's a lot of recovery needed and so 
even if there's anybody tonight in your home right now, um, maybe would you be willing to exercise a uh, faith yeah. as well and just touch wherever if it's if it's a mental illness, just touch your mind or yeah. touch your touch your head. If if it's a physical illness, just touch it. And as God's praying, we're going to believe that God is going to move by His Spirit. Mm. Yeah, Praise let's pray. God. Father, you're so kind. You're so Hallelujah. good. The gift you give us. And we thank you that one of the gifts the Holy Spirit gives is the gift of healing. We thank mm. you so much for the times you've healed my body. You've healed yes. my mind. Thank you, mm. Father, just for all the believers in this place. We are testimonies mm. of healing. You've healed our soul. Hallelujah. Wow. The blood of Jesus. Mm. And we thank you, Father, that you're not just the baptizer mm. of the Holy Spirit. You are the, you're the healer. We believe that you're the common king and you're our savior. And we pray right now, Father, for, for all yeah, types yeah. of healing in this moment. We yes. pray, Father, for those who need healing in their mind. Mm -hmm. We pray, Father, for a release. Amen. All anxiety would go. All depression yes. would go in the name of Jesus. Yes. I pray, Father, for those who need a, a touch in their body from the yes. top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, whatever the mm -hmm. need is, that you would work and move in them right now. We Amen. pray especially for those suffering with coronavirus. We Amen. thank you for the healings that you have brought through that. We pray that there will be another yes. one added to that tonight who's listening Amen. in the name of Jesus. We pray, yes. Father, even for those who need healing of the soul, thank yes. you for that person who's listening right now who doesn't know Jesus yet as Lord and Saviour, but the Holy Spirit's working and moving and speaking. Yes. We pray complete healing, that they would surrender their life to Christ, repent of sin, and yes. be baptised afresh in the Holy Spirit, Yes. accepting Christ as Lord. But Father, yes. we pray right now, you are the God yeah. who heals. It's not us. Yeah. It's not our ministries. It's not our okay. churches. It's your spirit. Yes. And I pray, Father, that you would work and move for the honour and the glory of Jesus Christ's name yes. by healing and working and moving now. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. And if you if you are someone who's listening and you're you're not a Christian, but uh, either tonight maybe you're you can feel God speaking to you. Or even as Garth was praying there, would you get in touch with us? We're not here yeah. to judge you or condemn you. And uh, I'd say Garth will hopefully be fit to identify with that uh, whenever you got saved in the church and that, Garth. It's, we're not here to judge. We're, we're just here to, to get our arms around you and to say, look here, uh, come on into the family of God. Yeah. And uh, if you're maybe you've drifted away from God, come back to him tonight. He's waiting for you. He's not going to beat you up. He's going to take you back into the family and just... Right. You'll enjoy him again. But Garth, um, look, maybe we'll do this again sometime. Yeah. But it's been really, really enjoyable. I know in, in Brookburg, we're all very, I'll use it for manator, we're all very fond of you. And, uh, <laughs> and thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your example. Yeah. And as a as a younger man, uh, you've been an example to me as a even an older oh, believer. Do you, do you um, yourself? Yeah. But... But yeah, that smiles are resistible. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but thank you, everybody who has tuned in tonight. I hope that yeah. we have uh, just stirred up your appetite yeah. um, for the Holy Spirit. We, we have only touched on a few things. So um, if, if there's any questions you have on this private message, this page, can I just uh, leave you one uh, just uh, note? A, we're going to be back on again on Thursday night, and uh, we have a new um, Bible study series. So uh, the last time we did a series in the book of Philippians, this time we're going to the book of Jonah, and we believe that it's it's a something that we need for this time um, as a as a local church. We believe it's a, it's going to be a word for the church in general, um, and especially after what David Legg shared with us a few weeks ago. Um, about that but if you're up for uh, joining us come on here on Thursday night and uh, myself and Ashley Arnold are going to be taking a week about teaching this book and applying it to our everyday lives and if you want to join up you don't need to sign up this time we're not doing a sign up but the notes is on our website and they are actually on the website right now so you can go on to our website um, www.bbalem.org.uk and the notes are there um, save them if you want on your device or print them out and come join us on Thursday night it's going to be a really good study I believe so there you go Gareth thank you so much 
Uh, is there anything you want to say before you go, Garth, or is it all said? No, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> Garth, thank you. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in. And if you need any help, get in touch yeah. with us. God bless every one of you.